Have you ever heard the saying, you're as close to God as you want to be? I've heard it too. I've been a Christian for 20 years now. And I've often heard that phrase, but I have never really heard like an explanation about what exactly does that mean? So today we're going to talk about the simplicity and the complexity of drawing near to God so that he will draw near to you. Listen, that verse comes from James 4, 8. It says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Listen, we are as close to God as we want to be. Now, I know for some people that sounds difficult. That sounds untrue. But listen, God is near to us right now. He's as near to us right now as he's ever been and as he's ever going to be. Because listen, God never moves. The only thing that happens is we humans, we step away from God. And we do that either knowingly or unknowingly. We do that through our thoughts, through our actions, through our way of living. Listen, if we want to be close to the Lord, then we have got to be close to the Lord. Listen, in order to be close to the Lord, we must, number one, be in his word. I know that we like to complicate things. I do it myself all the time. But being spiritually healthy is very simple. The things that is required on our part are simple. We have got to be in the word. Now, I've heard Dr. David Jeremiah call it force feeding one day. And what he was talking about is there's times in our life where we do not feel like reading the word. I mean, I've been through that myself to where I, I can't get enough of the word. And then sometimes I just don't even feel like reading the word, you know? So we must, during those times, force feed ourselves. We must feast on the word of God, whether we feel like it or not. And when we do that, we are drawing close to the Lord. We are staying co close to the Lord. And through that, our awareness of his presence is heightened. His presence is always with us. Always. It never goes away. It's always available. And it's just our perspective or our idea of what being in the presence of the Lord actually is. So the first thing is we must be in his word. The second thing is we must be praying. In order to stay close to the Lord and to be aware of his presence at any given time, we must be praying. And that's another thing that is so simple that we complicate. Like we think Sometimes that we have to say the right words, that we have to be in the right position, that we have to be in the right mood, that, you know, that the circumstances have to be just right for us to just simply pray. And that is not true. We can pray while we're driving, while we're doing the dishes, you know, while we're playing a sport. I mean, we can literally be praying at any given moment, regardless of what we are doing. Yes, it's better if we can have some focused prayer time with the Lord and actually be aware of the thoughts we're thinking, to like be aware of the prayers that we are praying. That is a good, good thing. But to think that you cannot pray unless all these situations are in order, that's never gonna happen. Like our lives are never stagnant. At least they shouldn't be. Like the majority of us have full schedules. Like we're going full speed ahead. And if we don't intentionally pray, then the prayer, your prayer life is never going to happen. Okay? So you just have to do it. And number three, we must be fellowshipping with other believers. Now, I am a big believer in the local church. I believe that every believer 
needs to fellowship with other believers. Because if you're just in the world all the time, you're, you're I, I don't know if I should, would call it fellowshipping or not, but you're just hanging around worldly people. And, you know, maybe you're in corporate America or you're just um, in a family that you're the only believer. Like that is very hard to stay upbeat and motivated in the Lord and in your spiritual disciplines when you literally have not one person in your life encouraging you to do that. It's a very difficult way to live, believe me, I know. So we have got to be making it a point to fellowship with other believers. And yes, I believe that is going to church every Sunday. Now listen, I've been going to church, the same church, every Sunday for the last 20 years. Yes, I've missed some Sundays. Yes, on some Sundays, I have had to force myself to go to church because I know the benefits. Even if I don't feel like going. I mean, that happens. There's some days I don't feel like going. I would just like to stay home, relax, you know, but... The benefits of fellowshipping with other believers cannot be underestimated. We need other believers in our life to encourage us. And listen, when life goes crazy, when things happen out of our control, which is lots of things, and, um, you know, like terrible issues arise in our life, we are going to want and need those other believers in our life because they're going to be there to to carry us, to hold us up, to pray for us, to encourage us, to speak truth over us. And I just um I just cannot express to you how valuable I believe the local church is. Now I understand and this is a message for a different time that many people have been hurt by the local church. I understand that. I do. But Jesus Christ tells us to not give up meeting with others. So if you have been hurt in the church, I'm sorry about that. We just must be fellowshipping with other believers. And number four, we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and we have to respond. Listen, we're not going to do this perfectly. Take it from me. I have obviously felt the Holy Spirit impress upon me to do something and I have not done it. And that does not bring me closer to the Lord. So that actually brings me farther from the Lord because I am now ashamed or guilt ridden or beating myself up because I didn't do what I knew he wanted me to do. But listen, we are imperfect people. We are called to faith not perfection. So we need to dust ourselves off, get back up, get back in tune, back in a relationship, a close intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and do the next right thing. The next time the Holy Spirit impresses upon you to do something, do it. And I believe, now maybe not everybody believes this, but there will always be another opportunity to do the right thing. I mean, as long as you're still breathing, you have an opportunity to do the next right thing. You have an opportunity to say yes to the Holy Spirit, yes to the promptings of the Spirit and live out. You know, that's that's doing God's will when you follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now, I hope that word encourages you today to draw close to the Lord through those four things, through prayer, through reading your Bible, through fellowship, and through following the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now, I think I got those out of order, but listen, the order does not matter. Those four things, if you begin, I guess, by reading the word, the other three will definitely come along and you will want to do those other three things when you are in the word all the time and it is prompting you, it's causing you to think different, to live different. And that 
is how we draw close to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you that you care about every single detail of our lives and you want to be in a close, intimate relationship with us. So Lord, help us to, to reach out, to draw close to you so that we can be aware of your ever-present presence. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I hope you enjoyed that word today. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment so that I know that these messages really are impacting your life. And also don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter so that you never miss an encouraging word because I put one out every Wednesday. All right, take care. God bless.